So my name is Jeremy Cunningham and I'm a Fixed Income Investment Director at Capital Group. Well, in a word, I, I guess it's the enemy. Um, so higher inflation erodes the purchasing power of nominal uh, bonds. Uh, so that's why inflation-linked bonds have been in absolutely invaluable over the recent period. And you can have those in your portfolio to protect the portfolio or add value to your portfolio. So uh, that they have been absolutely key to active managers. Um, with respect to the outlook, you know, when we think about where inflation is, today and clearly it's been very stubborn and we think that's going to be continue to be the case and and it's not going to be a rapid decline of inflation that I think some elements of the market think. So we think it's going to be higher for longer and therefore the Fed will be tighter for longer uh, and into next year we think it will revert back probably not back to where it came from those very very low levels but but close uh, towards those those types of uh, inflationary levels that we saw previously. Well, with the Fed and the ECB, you know, um, the we think that they will remain tight. Uh, we think that potentially there is still potential, although the Fed have paused, that they could reignite their tightening policy and actually tighten further from here. We don't think it's going to be significant, but, but certainly there's a chance of that. Similarly, with the ECB, we think that further tightening is very likely. Uh, and that is a watching brief, I think, for investors as we move into the next sort of six to 12 months. They look very good for the long term. And I stress that because clearly in the near term, there's still a lot of uncertainties uh, that, that are around and, and can Im impact valuations. But when one looks at these types of entry levels for, for higher corporate bonds and you compare them to history, you don't often see these types of yield levels and they, they don't hang around for too long typically. Now it's worth stressing also that the reason we are at this high level of yields is because of the treasury yield rather than the spread. So there is potential as we move into a slower growth recessionary environment for wider spreads for higher corporate bonds. The actual outlook though, when you look over the medium to long term, yield levels of around sort of eight, nine percent imply an annualized uh, five year return of around eight, nine percent. So very attractive. We would stress again though, is it's key to do two things. One, gradually begin to allocate and lock in these types of yields but also really importantly is to really build your portfolio bond by bond you know, from a bottom-up perspective because certainly there's going to be some companies that are going to come under stress in a slower growth type of environment and so that is really important to be a bottom-up investor as well. Definitely, I, you know, when you, when you look at the investment grade corporate market Yes, when we get into recession, just like the high, uh, high yield market, you will see spreads widen, but the absolute level of yields are very attractive, for the, in, again, for the same reasons that we talked about for the high yield market. And we don't expect, because it's a higher quality market, we don't expect spreads to widen dramatically. In addition, when you look at the, the investment grade corporate market, the duration or the sensitivity to interest rate is quite long, it's about sort of six, seven years. And so when you get into that slower growth, potentially a recessionary environment, you'll see yields come down, treasury yields come down, and that tailwind from the duration element of investment-grade investment corporate bonds will be really powerful uh, in that type of environment. So again, same approach, bottom-up approach, active approach, because you have to be very selective across the universe and also gradually begin to lock in these types of valuation levels. Yeah, and so it's a big question because when you look at the universe emerging market sovereign bonds, it's over 80 countries now. And so there's a massive dispersion of different types of economies at different stages, etc. Uh, but, but when you sort of drill down and have a look at the, the universe into sort of, sort of geographic areas, 
I guess the two that are really more attractive is Latin America. We saw very, very preemptive tightening from a lot of Latin American economies. They're now actually tip, tipping really towards a more easing uh, policy across many of those economies there. So they're, they're attractive. Um, in addition, with the unlocking of China, you know, a lot of Asian economies will benefit from that, and particularly from China, Chinese tourists uh, that will bolster certain economies within, uh, within that uh, Asian region. And so probably they're the, the two primary areas of opportunity. When you compare local currency EM to hard currency EM, they have a bias towards local currency. We think valuations there are more attractive, particularly from a carry perspective. Securitized bonds are really valuable instruments to have in a broader portfolio. And the reason being is because they add diversification. They are actually quite lowly correlated, and sometimes that's negatively correlated to corporate bonds. And that's because they're driven by very different factors uh, to, to those corporate markets. And when you look at valuations today, you look at valuations of securitized bonds relative to US corporates for the first time potentially ever, or certainly in a long time, valuations for securitized bonds actually are more attractive than investment-grade corporates. 